Hi, I'm back. I wanted to do a quick update for you. As most of you probably know, um, I in my you know recent videos, <laughs> I talked about how I was pregnant, and so um, I had my little baby boy, and that's where I've been. Is um, just <laughs> very very busy and not sleeping much, but um, he was born on the 13th, and he weighed eight pounds five ounces, I believe. Yes. Yes, because my daughter weighed 7'4", so he was just a little bit more than a pound bigger than her. So um, that happened, and I want this video to be this first part, just a quick little update for you guys, you know, to let you know that I'm doing really well, um, you know, everything went well, you know, my little boy's doing good. Um, and then the second part of this video, I want to share my birth story with you. I mentioned, I think, a little bit about um, maybe in... A video I can't remember but I may have mentioned that I had a c-section with my daughter and so I was trying to not have one <laughs> with my son and so I just want to do a birth story and for those of you that are interested um, and just kind of go through the whole thing how everything went for me and so I'm calling it birth story number two because my daughter was birth story number one <laughs> since I had her first and I do want to record a video about that because I think that is gonna be really informative and I, um, like if I saw a video about what happened to me with my daughter, it would have, I would have like really learned a lot from it and maybe hopefully been able to prevent some things. Um, but I wasn't like really educated and how it all worked and I had never been in a hospital before, um, when I had her. And so, um, I just, I really want to share that story with you guys. So, um, updates, everything good. I'm going to show you next a little clip. Um, of him so you can see him and then after that I'm going to share my birth story with you guys. Hi Kaden! Hi buddy! Hi! Hi baby! Hi baby! Alyssa, who's that? Hey, Is he your brother? Yeah, that's mine. <laughs> Yours? Yeah. All right, so here is my birth story. Um, first of all, like I just mentioned earlier, I had a C-section with my daughter. So this time around, I wanted to not have one. So that is what um, used to be called VBAC, vaginal birth after C-section. But now they call it trial of labor after C-section. Um, I don't know why, just that's what <laughs> I was told is the official name now for for that. And I waited, um, I think they say to wait at least 18 months before you get pregnant after a C-section. I mean, you don't have to, obviously, but to give the best chances of your scar, like, really healing well. And um, to, you know, lessen the chances, of, uh, the, I mean, the biggest risk to trying to have your baby vaginally after a c-section is the scar ribbon open and if you wait long enough then it really isn't a problem it's already a very small risk but like the longer you wait the better it's healed and the smaller the risk and so i forget how long i waited um 20 months maybe i think it 18 months they say and so i tried to wait at least 18 months and so somewhere like a little bit um down the road from that is when i get pregnant with him and um, him and my daughter are um, actually almost exactly two and a half years apart because she was born on December 9th and he was born on June 13th. So just like um, two and a half years and a couple of days, <laughs> a few days, four days. So uh, what I did this time around is I became really, really educated on, you know, everything to do with how people have babies here. <laughs> and um, I got a doula. I switched um, under her, you know, advice. I switched my doctors. I went to another so that I would go um, give birth in another hospital because apparently the one that I gave birth in um, to my daughter is has like one of the highest and since what's that word? <laughs> one of the highest rates of C-sections. I don't know. That's what she told me. I'm not really sure. But I switched to the other hospital. It's smaller, kind of more cozy atmosphere. And then the doctors that I um, w went to the second time, it was actually a group of midwives and doctors. 
and they are just amazing. I loved them. I thought I really liked my doctors when I was pregnant with my daughter, but then this time around, I didn't even know it was possible to like them more, but I liked them even more this time, you know, the, these new ones. Um, and mostly I would see midwives. I met all the doctors and I met um, all the midwives. You know, you kind of see somebody different every time. So you kind of, you know, whoever's delivering your baby, you met at least once. And so um, I believe there's more midwives at that practice than there are doctors. And that's who typically would deliver your baby if everything is going well. And then if you need some kind of interventions, if you obviously if you need a C-section, then a doctor would step in and do the things that, that the midwives couldn't do. Um, but for the most part, that unless you really, really want a doctor and then you, you can request to have one no matter what. Um, but I wanted to have a midwife because they are more... Um, you know, they're more experienced at like natural birth. If you're having trouble, they have suggestions for what to do, you know, how to push, what positions and all that stuff. And that's exactly, you know, what I wanted and what I needed this time around because I was trying to, you know, have my baby naturally. And I was also trying to not use any um, interventions and any drugs because um, I know that sometimes for some people, an epidural can slow down the progression of labor. It can make it difficult for you to push the baby out because you don't really feel the urge to push. You don't really, I mean, some people still might, but it, for the most part, you're kind of numb. Um, with my daughter had epidural and I didn't really feel anything. <laughs> and also it made my contractions start getting like further and further apart when I had the epidural. So I wanted to avoid one this time um, for at least as long as I could because I was really worried it was going to mess things up for me and I was gonna end up with a C-section again. Um, and so when I went into labor, I went into labor, um, at three, yes, three, um, you know, um, PM <laughs> during the day. And I was lying down to rest actually at the time because my daughter was taking her nap. And so I laid down and I felt like the baby broke his leg inside of me. It was like this huge, like I don't know, like that's exactly what it felt like, like a snap or like a pop. And I was like, oh my gosh, what just happened? And it scared me so much because I was worried about the baby. So I jumped up out of bed and then I just felt all this water like start pouring out of me. And I was like, okay, so that was my water breaking. <laughs> and I, um, I went downstairs, I called my mother, she was visiting. So she was coming to visit two days before my due date. And my due date was on the 14th. And so like the week before she came, I was freaking out every day that I was gonna go into labor and nobody was gonna be here to watch my daughter because my mom wasn't be, going to be here yet. Um, but actually it, you know, it didn't happen and it happened the day after she got here. She got here on the 12th in the evening and then you know, on the 13th, it's like perfect timing. You know, He waited a perfect timing. Um, so I called her, I think she just went to the grocery store. So she came home, I called my husband. Um, he came home, my daughter was still taking her nap. And um, I didn't really know what to do. My I didn't really have strong contractions. Like I was having Braxton Hicks contractions for a couple of weeks before this happened, but they didn't hurt. It just felt like you know muscle tightening in your belly, and I mean at at most it was just maybe like slightly uncomfortable, but it wasn't painful. And so that was what was happening. I was trying to time them, but it's so confusing because they're like different lengths of time and different time in between them and so I was just getting really confused trying to time everything and I called my doula and I talked to her and um, for some reason I thought that she would come over um, when this happened and she didn't she, well maybe because people can be in labor for hours after their water breaks and so it's like what was she gonna do just like hang out here um, until my contractions really start up I don't know um, but she just told me to wait and to call her in a couple of hours and let her know how things are and, you know, wait until I can like really time my contractions and they're like a certain amount of time apart. So I waited, um, two hours. So what, that was five o'clock by then. And I was having them and I mean, they were getting kind of stronger, but it wasn't like in, I thought that like a real contraction, I would be in like extreme pain, you know? And so it wasn't like that. It was something that I could tolerate. So I'm, I was assuming they weren't like the real contractions yet, but sometimes they would be kind of regular, you know, sometimes they'd be, you know, like four minutes apart. 
Um, but then other times they'd be not a different amount of time apart. So I just didn't know what to do. So I called her again and she's like, oh, just keep waiting. But I was getting really antsy. And my mom had um, me and my brother really, really quickly. My brother was born, you know, within two hours after she went to labor. And so um, she was really worried for me. And she's like, you're going to have this baby in the car. And I was getting really nervous. So I was like, okay, I'm going to call my doctor. Because Adula told me not to call my doctor because she said they'll just make you come in the hospital. And then you're, you're going to have, because I um, had a C-section, I would have to be monitored um, constantly. Those things that they put on your belly to measure the baby's heartbeat and to measure the um, you know frequency of your contractions. Um, and so she's like, you're going to be more comfortable at home. So wait at home as long as possible. Uh, but the monitors that they have at my hospital, which was another reason to switch there, are actually waterproof and wireless. So even though, yes, it's an inconvenience to have them on your belly um, and you do have some wires and like a little thing that you have to wear on your shoulder that it sends like the wireless signals, I guess. Um, you can still walk around, be in any position. You can leave your room. You can um, go take a shower or sit in a bathtub if you wanted to. So it, it wasn't uh, as bad as it could have been. Like in my hospital, I had my daughter. They were not wireless, and you were you could leave like your bed. You can go two feet away from your bed, <laughs> and that's it. So um, I called my doctor because I was just getting really nervous. And they were like, well, you can do whatever you want, but, you know, you can come in. If you want to come in um, because, you know, you're not sure what's going on with your contractions and stuff like that and you're having trouble measuring them, um, you can just, and your water, you know, has already been broken for a couple hours, you can just come in and we'll admit you to the hospital. So I went in and got admitted to the hospital. I called my doula, so she said she'd come meet me, so she came to the hospital. And my husband came with me, and so my mom um, stayed home with my daughter. And after I got to the hospital, a little bit after five, um, you know, they started measuring the strength of everything and my contractions, even in the car on the way to the hospital, I felt like they started getting, you know, more regular and then they still weren't super duper bad by the time I got to the hospital, but they were definitely stronger and they were definitely, you know, something that I would call painful at this point. Um, and they measured me and I was six centimeters dilated. Um, and they were like, well, you're in an awful good mood for being six centimeters dilated. <laughs> um, because it felt really good in between the contractions, like the contractions hurt. But then in between, it was just like complete relief and you just felt like really good, you know, like not painful at all. So during, obviously, I wasn't like, hey, how's it going? But in between, I was like, you know, smiling and chipper. So um, I ended up walking around. Uh, there's just like a little area where you can just do like a little loop and so I just walked and walked out there um, with my husband and my doula and then when a contraction would happen they were getting pretty painful at that point so I would just like hang on to my husband because it felt better to just like hang on to somebody and just kind of relax and hang there than just stand up you know so I was kind of breathing through them but then in between I felt pretty good but then it started getting to the point where even in between because I think the time in between them was shortening it like wasn't enough time to really like relax and recover from the contraction that just happened so I was like okay I don't think I can walk around anymore I think I need to go in the room and like sit down or lay down or something so I got in the uh, bed and I was facing like not the way that you would face when you're sitting in the bed. I was facing the other way and I had it reclined all the way up. So I was like hanging on to the back of it like that. So I don't know why that just felt comfortable for me. And at that point they were getting really, really, really bad. Um, where like in, in between the contractions, I was just like, oh, like trying to like, I don't know, catch my breath and relax, but it, they were so bad. I thought I was gonna die of pain. Uh, I didn't really experience full on like worst of worst contractions with my daughter because I ended up having an epidural before I got to that point, even though I was induced. So they were kind of wonky induced contractions, which are typically different than the natural ones you experience. Um, and so I was like, oh, I can't do this. <laughs> I'm going to die. And um, I guess that's a, it's called like transition, that point um, when right before the pushing, um, when it's like the worst. And that's when most people say like, I can't do this. <laughs> and that's exactly what I was saying. And I was like, can you give me any sort of drugs <laughs> at this point? Um, and they're like, well, we need to check how dilated you are because after a certain amount of, you know, 
dilation or whatever the drugs are bad for the baby. And so they checked and I was eight centimeters dilated and they're like, we can't give you the drugs anymore at this point. And an epidural would take, it takes like an hour because you have to get an IV. Um, like I had an IV with nothing in it um, or whatever that's called, just, just the thing right here, not like the tubing, but they would have to hook up an IV with um, fluids and give me a certain amount of fluids, which takes at least like half an hour. And then then anesthesiologist would have to come in and do her thing. And so the whole thing takes like an hour and they're like, there's really no time for that because by then you're probably going to be pushing or like super close to pushing. And so we don't like, Give you an epidural when you're pushing so i couldn't have any sort of drugs and <laughs> on the one hand that's really good because that's what i wanted um, i wanted an all-natural birth but at the time um, that this was happening i was just like oh no <laughs> oh no no and um, it was really bad i have no idea how long this really bad period of time lasted for me it was probably like I don't know, maybe like two hours or like an hour and a half. I have no idea because I like lost all track of time. I was just trying to survive that period of time. I was just trying to get through it. And so um, I, I got through it because it's, I started feeling like I have to push. And it's also painful and uncomfortable, but it's kind of like a whole different kind of sensation. It's not like I'm going to die from the pain anymore. It's, it's like a whole different thing. And I'm not going to say that it's, you know, a lot better, <laughs> but it's, it's not, it doesn't feel quite as painful. I'm sure everyone's different, but um, anyways, so then it was time to push and I turned around and I was basically like sitting in the bed. And I know that's not the best position to be on your back and like squatting or, you know, there's a lot of better positions to push the baby out for you that are, you know, more comfortable and make you tear less. And I initially planned to not be on my back in the bed, but at that point, I was, I was in so much pain that I was like, I literally cannot move because even when I, before st I started pushing and I was having my contractions, the doula was like, I can draw you a bath. You can go in the shower. You know, when I was like, I can't do this, you know? And I was like, I can't move. <laughs> I would like that, but I literally like, I feel like I'm going to die if I move at all because I'm in so much pain. So, um, I ended up pushing for two hours and either 30 or 50 minutes. I can't remember, but a long time. It felt like a super long time. And honestly, that was probably the hardest part um, because it was really discouraging because it was taking so long and you think like, okay, I'm pushing now, I'm about to have the baby. But it, you know, it was such a far way off from having the baby. And I, at that point, even though my labor overall was, you know, quite short, if you think about it, I, um, my water broke at three and then I had him at 10 50 PM that same day. So it was pretty short. Like I'm pretty lucky in that sense. I don't know how people do it for like 30 hours like that, you know, without any drugs or anything. Um, but it was, I was just like getting really, really upset that the pushing wasn't working because with my daughter, I got to push with her before I had the C-section and there's some bone that you have down in there that the baby needs to get past and they kept telling me that oh she's not getting past this bone you know and so this time around um i asked i'm like whatever bone is down there like is he getting past the bone and they're like no not yet um and so i was um you know really worried that i wasn't gonna get him past this bone whatever this bone was you know and so I kept asking, they're probably like, what is her obsession with this bone? Because <laughs> every time I would push, I'd be like, did he get past it? And they're like, not yet. And I was like, no. <laughs> so um, the midwife was actually super awesome and helpful and dealt with, you know, all my we weirdness and questions and complaints. She was so, so nice. And um, she kept giving me all these suggestions of like, you know, sit up like this um, they put like some rail on and then tied like um, a sheet for me to pull on and then they like all these different things were happening and to help me to help me push this baby out which was awesome because when I was having my daughter nobody was helping me with anything they were just kind of like push push okay it's not working we'll give you a c-section you know so this time it was really really helpful like she was trying so hard <laughs> to get this baby out of me and I am really appreciative of that and um, let me think what else <laughs> I was gonna tell you. I lost my train of thought for a second here. Um, oh, I was, 
um, tearing a lot. I guess you can tear on the inside as well as the outside. And so I was tearing on the inside. I was losing a lot of blood and I felt super lightheaded. Like I kept being like, I think I'm going to pass out. <laughs> and they're like, no, no, don't pass out. <laughs> and I was like, I, I really want to push. They're like, push harder, push harder. And I was like, I'm trying to, but I literally feel like I have no strength and I'm super dizzy and I think I'm going to pass out. And so they gave me something like sugar or something. They said sugar water that they're going to hook up to my IV to try to get me to have more energy and like more strength to push the baby out. So I don't know if that's part of the reason that um, it took so long. But, you know, after almost three hours, I was able to push him out. Um, I did tear quite a bit and I lost a ton of blood. And so I was feeling, you know, really, really bad. I was I couldn't really like sit up or lift my head up because then I would like pass out from all the blood that I lost and um, he was born and they put him um, on my belly because he was still connected by the umbilical cord and so he couldn't be like on my chest because he wouldn't reach and I had asked them because I read that it's really best for the baby to let the umbilical cord I guess it pulses because it's delivering all the nutrients to the baby like that's what it does inside of you and so it's really best to wait until it's done pulsing before you cut it so the baby receives that like tail end of all the nutrients and all the good stuff and you don't just stop the flow of it um, and so just to wait I forget I don't know how many minutes it takes but it's not like a super long time so he was lying on my belly he was all like <laughs> covered in blood there's a picture that um, either my doula or my husband took that is, um, you know, me and when he's on my belly, um, everything, like nothing bad is showing. Everything's like covered and stuff, but you can just see me and the baby. And honestly, <laughs> if I want any more children, because as of right now, I'm happy with two, I'm going to look at that picture <laughs> because it is going to make me change my mind. It is, I don't watch any like scary movies or anything with gore in it because I don't really handle it really well. Um, so maybe if you do, then to you, this wouldn't be scary or gory, but to somebody like me that never looks at this kind of stuff, like I, blood, like I can't look at blood. It makes me feel like woozy. So looking at this picture, is just like, I look like death. You know, there's blood everywhere. There's this like purple, slimy, blood covered baby on my belly. <laughs> and it is like the scariest, most horrific thing you will ever see. I looked at that picture and I was like, oh my gosh, how did I survive that? I don't know, but I don't want to do it again. And, um, but he was, oh, he was so cute and he was perfect. They wiped him down and cleaned him up, you know, and then he, he opened his little eyes and it was looking, it was just so precious. It's always so precious when you like look in your baby's eyes for the first time because you always wonder like what they're going to look like and what they're going to like feel like in your arms. And so it's just like a really sweet moment. I don't want to make you think that it wasn't by describing it as gory. It was just gory in the picture. Um, so then they cut the vocal cord and um, my husband didn't do it because he can't look at blood either so my doula actually cut the umbilical cord they let her do it um, and then I got to hold him and um, you know they did not insist on taking him away and doing anything until I wanted them to so I could hold him for as long as I want to it was really really nice it's like a really nice um, really like family centered hospital where they really focus on like natural birth and like letting you kind of do it your way you know if it's at all possible and so um, then they, they, I ended up, you know, giving them the baby. They didn't even take him out of the room. They just had to, um, like weigh him and measure him and stuff. So they did all that. And he was exactly the same length as my daughter. She was 20 and a half inches. And so was he, but he was a little bit chubbier, um, because she was born like a week and a half early and he was born, you know, a couple hours before his due date. So after that, they kind of rolled me in the bed to the room that I would be staying in because I couldn't walk because of the dizziness thing. I couldn't even like lift my head up. And so, um, I was there, the baby was there with me. Um, I couldn't nurse him. I tried right away. And then I tried when I was in the room and he just like, wasn't interested at all. And they told me, you know, some babies are just tired after the whole process and they need to rest cause he just wanted to sleep. And so as much as we tried to get him to eat, he was just not having it. Um, and he actually didn't eat until the next morning. So he's born at 10 50. Uh, PM and the next morning like at 10 or 9 in the morning is when I finally got him to eat <laughs> So apparently they can hold out for a long time uh, without food, but then he nursed and it was fine and um, With my daughter. I had a lot of trouble nursing her, but I kind of like got through it I'll tell you about it and you know her birth story and this time around 
it, it it was less trouble but it's um i find breastfeeding extremely painful and that's something that nobody ever tells you they're like you know birth is extremely painful but nobody says anything about breastfeeding being bad not to me anyways like i never heard i never like imagined that it was difficult or painful. I just thought it just like happened <laughs> naturally, you know? And um, so it's really painful for me. It's getting better now because it's been several weeks. And I think it's just something like I have to get used to because it's, you know, I mean, I guess everyone has different levels of sensitivity. And so to me, it you know feels really uncomfortable and painful. Um, but because of all the blood I lost, I had to have a blood transfusion and they didn't want to like force it on me so they were just kind of checking my blood periodically to see what my levels of hemoglobin were and just kind of suggesting like you really should have a blood transfusion <laughs> and I was like oh that sounds terrible I really don't want one and they were like okay well let's wait a little bit then and see how you're doing and I guess my levels were 5.8 and they're supposed to be 12 and my mother-in-law who um ha she's come to visit my mom came to visit and my mother-in-law came to visit and now my mom's here again so i've had lots of help so that's really really wonderful and um my mother-in-law works in the emergency room she's a nurse in the emergency room and she said like oh we would have transfused you like at six or even seven so i'm surprised that they let you go that low um but then i ended up talking they kept me an extra day and i ended up talking to the um, one of the doctors, she came in and talked to me and I guess the decision that ended up being made is <laughs> I pretty much need to, if I ever, ever want to leave the hospital, I need to have a blood, blood transfusion because they can't, if you can't get up and walk without like being dizzy and passing out, they cannot let you out of the hospital. So, and she said that your body can't make blood that quickly like it takes it a while to make the volume of blood that it would need to make so it was it's not like i can just like wait a day because that wouldn't be enough time um so i ended up having a blood transfusion and that was kind of scary um because i'd never had that before and just the thought of somebody else's blood in me just kind of creeps me out <laughs> but um it went fine and then my levels went up to nine and they gave me 10 days to bring them back up to 12. I was supposed to take these iron pills at home and then come back and get it checked. Um, and I actually did not take the iron pills because I had read about them and I don't know, I'm like really into natural stuff and I hate taking medicine and I was like, oh, I just really wanna get my iron through food. So I ate things like liver, <laughs> which I know most people would not be willing to do, but I actually don't mind the taste of it because I'm weird like that. So um, I ate that. I ate prune juice, actually has a ton of iron in it. So I drank that, I drank pomegranate juice, and I think another huge help was um, that I had what is called placenta encapsulation, where this super nice woman, um, she was so sweet. She came in um, to my house. We had brought the placenta home from the hospital. It was my refrigerator. Um, and she brought all her own like tools and everything. And I'm not sure what she did with it exactly, but um, I know one of the steps was dehydrating it in a food dehydrator and then grinding it down to a powder, making little capsules out of my placenta, which I'm sorry if that grosses you out or anything, but I had read that that has incredible benefits uh, for the mother and it also really helps with postpartum depression, um, which I mean, I was not officially diagnosed with, but I'm pretty sure I had some at least mild form of it with my daughter because after I had her, I just like could not stop crying. I would just, she would cry, I would cry, and that's how we would spend our nights <laughs> and most of the day. So um, I would looked into this, you know, placenta thing and I was like, I really, really want to do this. Um, it's not like ridiculously expensive and if it makes me feel at least a little bit better, then it would be worth it. But one thing I'd read about it also is that there's a lot of iron um, in the, you know, little pills and it helps, you know, raise your iron because most people are at least a little bit anemic because everybody loses some blood when you give birth and um, I happen to just lose a ton of it. And so I, that's what I was taking is my placenta pills. And my, um, after 10 days when I came into my doctor, my levels were 13, which, you know, is one above 12. So yay, I was so excited that I was normal now <laughs> in the blood, the blood department. 
Um, and the placenta, I think, is really, really helping. Honestly, like, I know that it's weird and most people haven't heard of it. And when I was telling the doctors and the nurses, you know, oh, can I have my placenta to take home? They were like, okay, you weirdo. They didn't say that, but they were like, okay, if you want to, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do with it? <laughs> but, you know, they were really cooperative and really nice about it. And I told them and they were like, wow, I've never heard of that. So, uh, honestly, best thing I've done, <laughs> best decision I've made because it has helped me so, so much. I didn't start taking it right away because when I came home, they had me on antibiotics so I wouldn't get an infection and um, I didn't want to take, you know, too much stuff all at once. And so I took it um, seven days after I got home because that's when I finished the course in antibiotics and that seven days when I wasn't taking it yet, um, I did definitely start to feel the same symptoms that I had felt with my daughter where I was just like really, um, I don't even know how to describe it. Like I was sad, but also it was just like, like this feeling of like despair, you know, especially in the middle of the night when you're not sleeping, you're just like frustrated and upset. And I'm usually like a super positive, happy person. Like I wake up in the morning and you know, birds are singing <laughs> and I'm just like, yay, what a wonderful day. I'm so excited to, you know, whatever experience today. That's just how I am naturally. And I was definitely not like that anymore. I was cranky and everybody was frustrating me and driving me crazy. And um, I, I, I would wake up and cry at night when you know he wasn't sleeping and I had to nurse him and I was just like getting really upset. And so when I started taking the placenta pills after seven days, I started feeling like myself again. And I'm so excited about that. Like I started feeling happy again and I started like really enjoying him uh, because that's, you know, one of the, um, one of the biggest, you know, pleasures is holding your little baby and just like, just enjoying him. You know what I mean? Just like holding him, smelling his little head. <laughs> and it's just like so precious. And it, you just feel like so happy. And I wasn't feeling that um, before, you know, I started taking those. And I started taking those and I started feeling good again. And, you know, instead of in the middle of the night just being like, okay, now go to sleep. I'm going to go to sleep. Like I would even sit there, uh, you know, a few extra minutes after I nursed him, just like holding him and just like, I don't know, taking it all in, you know, taking in the joy of being a mother again. And so I am really, really, really glad I did that. And if you had any problems at all with postpartum depression or just like, you know, your, your mood, you were feeling kind of different and wonky after you had your baby, um, I would really, really recommend. I mean, I don't know if it's going to help everybody and to the same degree, but it really, really, really helped me. And one of the best, you know, best things I've done is to get the placenta encapsulation done because it is, you know, been a huge, huge help to me. So that's, I think that's pretty much it. I think that's pretty much my whole birth story. Um, let me think of what else. I mean, he's doing good. We went to the doctor the day after we brought him home and then also a week after, and he was already up to nine pounds a week after. So, you know, he's eating good, um, gaining weight. So everything, I think, you know, that's pretty much it. I'm so happy that it went so much better this time around than it did with my daughter that, you know, I was able to avoid a lot of interventions. And, you know, just I'm, I'm happy that things finally went right. Um, I will say that it is extremely, extremely painful. Like, you cannot even imagine how painful <laughs> your contractions are. Well, I'm sure everyone's different, but for me, um, right before, you know, that last little bit of them. Um, and I didn't get to experience that with my daughter because of the epidural. So this time around, I was like, wow, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if I should have had an epidural or not. But after I got through it, it's like, okay, well, I got through it and I did it. And obviously I can do it without, you know, any drugs. And then when I was pushing him and I didn't have any strength and I felt like I was going to pass out and I felt like, you know, nothing was happening. He wasn't moving down. Um, I actually asked them, I was like, I think I need a C-section. I think you're going to have to give me a C-section. And they're like, no, no, keep going. So you definitely feel those moments of, you know, I can't do it. And it's definitely not, you know, a pleasant experience having a natural birth. But in the end, 
um, you heal a lot quicker. It's still very painful. I think in my mind, it was like, okay, I didn't, when I had a C-section, I had a really difficult recovery because I refused to take all the narcotics they wanted to give me for the pain because it was breastfeeding. I didn't want my baby to get any of the drugs. I took them like the first day when I was still loopy from the epidural, just like whatever they gave me, I was like still not thinking straight. But then after that, I was like, no, no, no. Um, and they're like, oh, it's fine if you're breastfeeding. And I looked it up on the internet and then I don't know, it was kind of conflicting information because <laughs> it said that it wasn't fine. Um, so I was like, I don't want to take anything. And so I was in a lot of pain after the C-section and you can't really walk um, very well. You can't, for two weeks, you're not supposed to go up or down stairs or drive. Um, and then really for three months is how long it took for me to stop feeling pain um, after the C-section. So this time around, the recovery was so much better. It was still really painful. I was surprised. Well, I think I just had the wrong idea because I was just like, oh, you have your baby and then you're, you're, you feel like yourself again, but then you don't realize like, oh, you're probably going to need to get stitched up down there and it's probably going to hurt, you know, afterwards. And so... Um, I was in a lot of pain afterwards and I had a lot of trouble um, walking around and sitting and after about two weeks, um, probably two and a half weeks is when how long it got progressively better and then at that two and a half um, week mark is when it was significantly better and I was like 90% back to normal. So the recovery compared to a C-section is definitely a lot better and so that is, you know, <laughs> big plus for a natural birth. Uh, but I did want to mention, you know, the, the recovery as well. So that's pretty much it. And if you watched this whole super long video, then thank you very much for that. And I hope that, you know, this was helpful to you in some way, especially maybe if you've had a C-section too and you are hoping to not have one a second time around. Um, you know, it can be done. And... You know, I just want to encourage you and give you kind of hope that, um, you know, you can hopefully have your baby naturally the second time around if you want to and if you so choose. So thank you so very much for watching and I will talk to you later. Bye.